Hello, it's Ruby and today I'm going to be filming a long overdue Q&A. I haven't done one of these for ages, I think it's been over a year and even then I'm pretty sure it was an assumptions video as opposed to a Q&A. So I asked on Instagram and received so many questions, I've narrowed it down to 45. I think today's video is going to be quite long though because I thought we could wrap Christmas presents at the same time. Um, so if you've got some Christmas presents to wrap then maybe we can do it together um, and you can put this video on while you're doing it. I'm hoping it can be nice and festive too. Also, you should get yourself some tea. Just because everything's always better with tea, I'm drinking the Candlelit Library Tea by Burden Blend, which is the one I released with them, and I've added almond milk and oat milk, a mixture of the two. It's also snowing outside, well, it's snowed, and so the snow is settled, and so I feel very festive, and it's also quite cold, my hands are freezing. So I thought, like, I'm drinking tea at the moment, so what best place to start than what is my favourite tea, which quite a few people ask. I feel like it's one of my main character traits by this point. I drink copious amounts. So currently my favourites are Chocolate Digestive by Burn Blend. I've been loving peppermint tea recently and chamomile tea. Just been on a real herbal tea kick. I've also got the Burden Blend advent calendar this year, which means that I'm trying a new tea every day, which I really am enjoying. Although I'm slightly behind because sometimes I open it and I'm like, oh, I'm not in the mood for black tea at the moment, so I end up having something else. And the other one, which obviously I've been loving, is Candlelit Library. Number one, because it's very good. Um, but number two, just because of the story behind it, like this is the tea that I created with the Burden Blend, and so every time I drink it, I'm reminded of that whole process and the people that I met, the relationships that I formed through making this tea. I do think that tea is a way of sharing stories. There's so much history in tea. The Boston Tea Party, the tea taxes, like there's so much that's gone into it and yet it's been preserved and people still drink tea every day and it's what you drink with someone when you're reflecting on your day. You're welcoming someone into your home. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna get my um, presents to wrap. I'm gonna wrap presents for my mum and sister today because they're out at the moment together. I'll wrap the small ones here and then maybe we'll have to move for like the slightly bigger ones. I've now set out all my mum's presents on the floor as to how I'm going to wrap them. So you might know that every year Carol Ann Duffy releases a new poem Christmas book and we actually don't have any of them, but my mum and I got really into Carol Ann Duffy when we were in Scotland this year, and so I bought her the Good King Wenceslas poem. This is only a little something, but I think she's going to really like it, and as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. I am going to go back to the questions in just a second, but I just want to show you how I wrap my presents. So I use um, craft paper for all of my gifts. A lot of the wrapping papers that we buy can't be recycled. Plus, I think it looks nicer. I'm gonna start with the really big question, which most people ask, what am I doing at the moment and what are my plans for the future? Which is a very good question. I think it also shows something I've been thinking about a lot recently. It's like how caught up we always are in what's going to happen next. Constantly we're thinking, okay, so what am I gonna do next year? I'm, I'm here at the moment, but what's gonna happen next? What's going to happen next? It's a really tiring way to think, and I'm really trying to stop myself from thinking too far ahead, which is actually has actually been quite hard because I am by nature a planner. I like to plan ahead. I like to know where I am, and I, I I'm not particularly spontaneous. And actually, I'm not at all spontaneous, but I'm trying to be a bit more open-minded, let things happen a little bit more. Having said that. That's not the answer people want to hear, I know. Um, so currently I am on a gap year, I suppose. Um, I am still, I mean, I really hate, I hate to use the word work because I really don't consider it work and I also never want to see it as work, but I am kind of working in that I'm creating YouTube videos at the same time and um, running uh, my stationery company, but still I would call this a gap year because my intention isn't to do YouTube full time. I also wanted to use this year to take a trip to Massachusetts in the autumn, which is something I've wanted to do since I was about 12 and I did do that and I'm now back from that trip. And um, I also wanted to spend this year writing, which again, I'm trying to make time for. So this year is kind of going as I planned for it to go. However, having said that, starting January, I am going to be starting a traditional job. Um, not full time, I'm only gonna be working three days a week, but I'm really looking forward to it. And um, I also think it's gonna provide some structure, which should be quite nice. I wrap this up and I always decorate the wrapping paper with stamps because I just think it makes it look nicer. I think for this one, I'm just gonna use this jug and then put it in the middle. So I've got that position until the summer. Um, I'm only going to be doing that for six months. And then in September, my plan is to do a master's. All at the same time, I want to be writing and prioritizing writing. Oh, that looks so pretty. 
someone else has asked what are your long-term dreams um what is your biggest dream like if you could do anything what would you do and my biggest dream is to be a writer i really want to write professionally and for that to be my career that's what i want to do more than anything and so i'm just kind of trying to do everything i can to help that to become a reality this is kind of less of a stereotypical goal as such but i also just want to live intentionally and not stop living intentionally and not feed into like hustle culture and kind of and fall into that because i know that i have fallen into that in the past and i just don't think it's i don't think it's right i really hate the idea of that being my focus next question um are you in a relationship lots of people always ask this one as well and romantic relationships are obviously very important to people but i always find it funny how it's one of the most asked questions on q and a's um no i'm not in a relationship and i genuinely just not interested in being in a relationship at the moment if you're the same i just want to stress that that's okay i know you might feel like a bit of an outsider for not being in a relationship or even just not being interested in being what in one and i just want to emphasize that that's okay do you read contemporary romance books like colleen hoover um no so i i like romance in like victorian novels and also the romantic i don't really like contemporary um romance novels not to say i think they're bad or that people shouldn't read them it's just personally not what i enjoy reading there is definitely light fiction that i do enjoy but i just personally don't like that where are you traveling to next so i don't have any plans short term to travel anywhere the traveling that i really wanted to do this year was america and i did do that i would however really love to go back to scotland at some point soon uh, i really loved scotland and it's also so close to here like i can get there so quickly and by train and i really love trains trains are my favorite way to travel there we go that is the finished product i just drew some little watercolor flowers on the front and then i need to add a little label saying it's for my mum so i've got these vintage christmas stickers these were a gift from my friend hattie like years ago and i never use them because they're so beautiful that i didn't want to but this year i am using them because they're meant to be used and when you decorate a present nicely i think i think it's part of i think it's part of the gift oh actually i say that but now i actually think i want to write on it in fountain pen instead of this particular one i will use these just not that I'm just going to write at the bottom. Well, that took a while, but that's my first gift done. Next, I've got my mum this, which is something she I know that she wanted, and she's been looking to get one of these for about like eight months now. And this is the particular one that she really wanted to get. It's from Lululemon, and it's a bag for when you're walking. So she could put like dog poo bags in here. Oh, now I really want to fill it with like walking essentials. So what can I fill it with? I'm, gonna ha I'm not going to wrap this now, I don't think. Okay, I'm going to fill it with, like, maybe a lip balm, a hand cream, some dog poo bags, uh, a little, like, thing of dog treats for Lola. Okay, so I got my mum's bag, but I'm not going to wrap it now. I'm going to wait because I really want to do that now. I'm going to wrap up my mum's main present instead, which is this. It's a four-in-one, so it's a face steamer, but it's also, like, a flannel warmer an aromatherapy diffuser and a humidifier. The kind of general theme of my mum's present this year is an at-home spa night, like a cosy day in, because that's my mum's sister and I like to have little like spa evenings together. And so I thought this would be a really cool thing that she could use on those evenings. And I got this in a Black Friday sale as well. So I got it for a good price. Oh, this is gonna be quite a hard one to wrap. Next, I got my mum a book about kind of like being in your 50s and she wouldn't mind me saying that. My aunt recommended it, so I really hope she likes it. I think she will because it's just the kind of book that my mum likes. Have you ever been to therapy or considered going to therapy? Yes, absolutely. Like, yes, I have been to therapy and therapy is definitely not something which should be stigmatised. It's um, perfectly normal for people to go to therapy. There's nothing to be ashamed of there. In the same way that we sometimes need to take care of our physical health, we sometimes have to take care of our mental health. Um, like sometimes something goes wrong. There's nothing wrong with admitting that we can't do it by ourselves and that we need some help. So I've seen a few therapists. In my um, second year of university, I saw somebody for about six months. Favorite novel opening line. I've actually filmed a video reading the lines of my favorite 50 books. Um, so I'll leave that link down below if you're interested in opening lines, but I love a good opening line. Um, my favorite one is probably Last Night I Dreamt I Went to Mandalay Again from Rebecca. I 
just think it's so it's so eerie and i mean the reason i love it so much is because i saw the stage show of rebecca a couple years ago um and i still i distinctly remember how she said that line they had all this mist and smoke oh, over the stage and then she emerged out outwards and she said last night i dreamt i went to mandalay again and it was so eerie and, and, and wistful uh that that line's probably been my favorite ever since do you paint uh i do paint i like painting with watercolor and oil paints um i'm not particularly good but it's okay to do something even if you're not good at it i find it relaxing books you would give a non-reader as a gift Ooh, that's a good question i think gift books can be very good the boy the mole the fox and the horse is my favorite i'm a big believer in that there is a book for everybody and there is a book which every single person will love if you think about how vast how broad human experience is and if you think about how many books have been written and you think about how big libraries are there is going to be something for every person lemony snicket says that there is always an answer in a library and i completely agree with him um we just need to kind of we just need to find the right book and so it's i, I mean it's hard to like name a specific book because it would depend very much on that person if I wanted to find them a book. What's on your Christmas list? And the number one thing on my Christmas list was a load of the Penguin Little Books Great Ideas volumes. How do you feel confident being quiet? I feel boring. Actually, sometimes if you're really quiet, you actually just come across as mysterious. What are your current favourite snacks? I'm in a huge buttered toast stage of my life. I'm having so much buttered toast and it's absolutely delicious. My number one favourite thing, snack at the moment actually though, is plain yoghurt with peanut butter protein powder mixed in and then you add brown flakes and granola mix it some more and add some frozen banana and some actual peanut butter and some chocolate chips it's so good it's like the best combination how much money do you spend on books this month i'm actually on a no book buying ban because i have two no you can't ever have too many books that's a lie but i do have a lot of books and i want to Start own, I'm going to start only buying books when I'm just about to read them because at the moment I'm buying books and then not reading them for months. So the amount I spend on books, I mean, it really depends. I typically buy my books secondhand um, and I buy books on Kindle and I borrow books from the library or from friends. So on average, maybe I spend like £15 a month on books, which is actually still quite a lot. But this month I haven't spent anything on books apart from gifts for other people. When can we read your book? Okay, so... I've been talking about the fact I'm writing a book for such a long time and honestly I'm always writing a book um but the book that I was working on we started sending to publishers and did get inevitable rejections but in the period of waiting even before we'd heard back from all of the publishers I decided to retract the book and put it on standby I'm not even editing it at the moment because I'm I'm happy with how the book is but I just don't want it to be the first book I release if I were to release a book. So instead I've been working on a different one. Um, this one's a children's book, it's a middle grade book. I just finished my third draft, which I've sent to my agent um, just last week. So I'm not currently working on that at the moment and it feels very strange to kind of have that behind me. Um, sorry, long way of saying, I don't know. Um, book publishing times are also very long. Like I didn't realize it, but like when a book is signed, it can be like a year before it comes out like it takes ages for books to be published here are some artists and composers that you discovered this year so the number one album i've been obsessed with at the moment ola i can't actually say her name i'm sorry but it's the winter songs album and i'll put her name on the screen in the album some of the best music i've ever heard oh let's bring out the stamps again this video is not going how i thought it would i thought i would have wrapped so many presents by now but i've literally wrapped three this is my third present as I say, I'm going to do one for my grandma next because I think I'm getting overwhelmed by how many things that are to wrap for my mum and sister. I might want to do it downstairs where I've got more space. In the place of a card or anything, I'm actually going to write my mum a poem. Something about the simple things and the things that are important because this um, really reminded me of Amber the Neat. So I'm just going to hole punch that so so useful for gift tags i'm just going to thread this through the string when i'm done i will paint a little something in watercolor on it though because at the moment it looks a bit boring have you ever had times where you weren't as productive how did you get over these 
everyone has periods where they're not as productive. Um, even from day to day, one day you might be feeling really productive and the next day you might be feeling rubbish and you might um, have no motivation to do anything. For me, productivity is so bound up in motivation and mindset and so I'm not productive when I'm doubting myself, when I think I'm going to fail because then it doesn't feel like there's any point to what I'm doing. If you tell yourself that what you're doing is important and tell yourself that you love it, then I think you're more likely to be productive. And that's how I try and overcome long-term drops in productivity, like really repeating mantras to myself and using positive affirmations. Just a quick example of this, when I was rejected from Oxford, I found myself being much less productive, much less motivated because my self-confidence was very low and it was through adjusting that that I was able to get my productivity back. Uh, my camera's about to run out so I think I'm gonna have to pause it here for now and check back in with you maybe tomorrow to film. Hello, it's the next day and hopefully the lighting is a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna continue with the Q&A and I'm actually going to wrap my grandma's present now. I finished wrapping my mum's presents and most of my sister's yesterday. Again, going on with brown paper. So my grandma's present is bird themed this year. I also want to get her something else to go with the gift but I just haven't seen it yet. Possibly I'll go book shopping and I'll get her a book about birds or something. Um, but the first thing is these um, playing cards which have lots of different birds on them. My grandma just really likes birds. And I got these when I was in America. Next question. Do you have any friends abroad and if so, where are they from? Yes, I have. Um, quite a few pen pals abroad actually. My friend Bella is from America, my friend Andrea is from Norway. These are people that I speak with quite often. I actually met up with Bella and Andrea this year as well which was so cool because we've been internet friends for years. Uh, my favourite museum in England. Oh that's a really hard one. Um, I think I, I might say the Foundling Museum. I really enjoyed that when I went. I thought it was really well curated and I like how it's a slightly smaller museum. It's at the site of the old Foundling Hospital which if you read Hetty Feather when you were younger by Jacqueline Wilson um, that's where it's set. It was a real hospital. Some very desperate parents left their children in this hospital and it was a much better option than the workhouses but still um, conditions were extremely tough and the museum walks through and shows you the experience of the children in here. They've got examples of like beds and menus and uh, the crockery that they use. Also they do a lot of na work now with disadvantaged children and so the last room of the exhibit is all about how we can use what we learn in this museum to actually drive change and um, like help children today which I think is is really cool to see in a museum but I also love the v &A. Looking back what do you think you could have done better with the book you published and what they're refer what this person is referring to is the book Araminta Parker, which I wrote when I was seventeen. I was in year twelve, and literally in the space of like two weeks, I wrote this book. I was really like I loved writing it. It was so much fun, and every spare moment I had, I would just be writing. Um, like I remember, kind of having uh, we had family friends around and. I just couldn't get this idea out of my head so I like snuck upstairs and I wrote a chapter and then I came back down but I was so absorbed and it was so much fun to to do. I wrote the book in two weeks then I read through it to check for errors and then I basically put it straight up on Kindle um, and like Amazon publishing so it was it's, it's not published it's a self-published book. Really didn't spend very much time writing it and it's one that I am now very embarrassed about because it doesn't I don't it's really not it's definitely not my best work. Retrospectively, I should have edited this book a bit more. I should have thought through the structure of it a bit more because it's, I mean, it's not very good, but um, it was still a really great experience and I'm glad that I did put it up because I have had people say that they really enjoyed it. I also know that it is very flawed and obviously it's been like five years since I read it and I was a lot younger. It is still up on Kindle. I am quite embarrassed about it, but I'm just, I'm gonna leave it up. Um, if nothing else, it shows growth as a writer if I do publish something else. Do you have a PO box? No, I don't. I've wrapped this. I'm just gonna go downstairs and get some stamps though because I brought the stamp box downstairs yesterday. My mom and I share the stamps. I mean, most of them are hers, but maybe like a quarter of them are mine. No, I was just saying that we both love using these stamps. So yes. mom, tell me which is your favorite stamp that we have? My life. The one and you've got me actually. The, the camper van. Yeah. And I've, I've really enjoyed using the, um, what is it, the 
I've also liked this one. It's really cute, little bear in the wood. I yes. really like this one. A little house. But they're all from Newly Bird Stamps. Yes. Shout out to Newly Bird Stamps. Newly Birds are the best. That's their logo. I will leave it linked down below because oh, she's a so small nice. business on. I don't know if she's on Etsy at the moment. Oh yeah, this one's really cute. This is actually from Hobbycraft. This yeah. one. But I've been the using bears, this one a lot. Look. Oh, we yeah, we bad, the bears, look. We bear mad last year. But I did have a Christmas tree that I was... Oh, I'm using that upstairs. Oh, you are. Positioning to go on top of there. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have you thought about making an academic planner that starts in January? Well, I mean, the yearly planner which we have released is basically an academic planner. Um, it's just that I've slightly altered the headings so that it can be used if you're out of education as well but you can effectively use all of the pages in the same way that you would in the academic and i've consciously done that more so than i did last year like they both are very similar planners just one's released in september and one's released in january he spreads page and the only thing that's really different is at the end of the week in the academic it says things to come back to in revision but instead it says and here's something i'm grateful for um things like academic feedback trackers or grade trackers they're not in here obviously but if you buy the yearly planner and you want to use it academically and there are any particular spreads that you would like from the academic planner then just pop us an email because um we could we could send you that specific spread for you to print out like i want you to be able to use the planner as best as you can okay that's how that's looking but i am again like i did with my mom just going to use some watercolor paints to paint this red because i just think it looks quite cute and I might do a little green scarf to go with it. Or, wait, I might do a little like silver Sharpie scarf. Do you always feel in the Christmas spirit or do you stop feeling festive when you're not doing something fun, uh, like something traditionally Christmassy? I mean, I do feel, obviously I feel festive when I'm doing something Christmassy. Well, I say obviously, not always. But no, I think feeling Christmassy, like you don't have to do something Christmassy to feel Christmassy. I feel most Christmassy when I'm at home, when I'm surrounded by family. Christmas is characterised by nostalgia, it's characterised by the things that you did when you were younger and we spent a lot of time at home, like in the house around Christmas time when we were younger. So for me, being at home, um, being surrounded by family, eating family meals, like watching Christmas films, I mean obviously watching Christmas films makes you feel festive, but just like being in the house with my family makes me feel quite festive. But I do think feeling Christmassy is like, it's definitely more of a mindset thing. And I and I, I believe that you can feel Christmassy throughout the whole of the year. It's not like it's just reserved for December. In A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens says that Scrooge kept Christmas in his heart and he crept Christmas well. Keeping Christmas well is more about keeping things in perspective, prioritizing the things that are most important, prioritizing kindness, prioritizing family. That's what defines like feeling Christmassy I think. Were you pressured to go into STEM when you were at school because you were academic, like traditionally academic? Um, kind of. My chemistry teacher was quite insistent that I do something sciencey at university, maths and two sciences at A-level. I wouldn't say that I felt pressured to do it, I was told I should do it but that's not really the same thing and actually for a while when I was in year nine I was really considering tra uh, like um doing medicine at university I was really considering training to be a doctor but then I decided I wanted to do English instead there we go there's the present and I'm just going to now bind it up all up with string of course what would you do if you could stop time I know exactly what my answer is to that I would read I would just read all of the books that I want to read that are on my TBR that I no, I might not otherwise get time to read. Do you use a filter on your YouTube videos? Yes, I do. Just to give an example, this is it without the filter. This is it with the filter. I just think it makes everything look a little bit cozier. How tall are you? I'm five foot two, so I'm quite short. How do I feel about choosing to do a gap year? Like, do I regret doing it? Do I think it was a good decision? I really think it was a good decision and I'm really glad that I did do it. There have definitely been times where I've been feeling very, um, I kind of, apprehensive about the whole thing, wondering if I made the right decision, um, simply because um, I'm seeing so many people off like doing things. I'm not really doing much this year. Well, I mean, it feels like I'm doing things, but I'm not, I'm sure you know what I mean. There have been moments where I've thought, did I make the right choice? But I definitely think I did because I feel like having that step back from education has been really important and it's helped me to be to put education in perspective and help me to form better opinions about like what I think about the education system which has been really valuable um, and I don't think I would have been able to do that if I was still 
in that system. Um, I still would like to go back into education, but I still feel like this has been a good idea. Um, favorite shops and brands. I really like to shop independently um, and shop from small businesses. One of my favorite companies is Newly Birds, which is the stamp company. I also love Note and Wish. They're my favorite stationery company. I actually um, released this, where is it? This washi tape with Note and Wish. I commissioned them to design this and then like bought a set number of these for our website, which was so, so cool. Um, and really fun as well to be able to support a business that I really I really love. And Bird and Blend as well as one of my favourites and um, again I released a team with them this year which is crazy. Favourite shops though, I also like love a good bookshop so Dawn Books is my favourite bookshop at the moment. Do you feel pressure to be in a romantic relationship? This kind of harkens back to a question I answered yesterday. Um, I don't know. Everyone's on their own path. Like be on different trajectories, like you shouldn't be comparing what you're doing to what other people are doing. Mark Twain says comparison is the death of joy. Oh also for my grandma I have got her this fancy soap because she likes a good soap. How do I know if I'm Russell Group or Oxbridge material and whether I should apply? It makes me so sad to read actually. I don't think there's like a straight, this makes somebody Oxbridge material or like Russell Group material. Think about whether you think that you would thrive in that environment and kind of does it excite you, the idea of studying in this way in these institutions. Personally, I think the main driving force for like whether your material, I hate that phrase, but like whether your like Russell Group material is literally just are you interested to learn? Do you want to learn? Do you want to be there? So if you're asking this question, yes, you are. Like, if you want to do it, then just, just go for it. What's the worst that can happen? They say, no, that's not the end of the world. I was rejected from Oxford. It was not the end of the world. And finally, I bet I've missed one. I'm reading through them all. I think I've answered all of these. Oh, favorite events from history. These aren't my favorites in terms of like, the fact that they happened, but just my favourites to learn about. Um, I love learning about the Titanic because of how it exposes like the social class system and how ingrained that was. The fact that like first class passengers were invited to leave the boat first. Very interesting as well to think about like the extent of human endeavour. And I also love learning about the French Revolution. I love Victorian London and Edwardian London. Edwardian more so actually. And I really love learning about the early modern period too. I think that's actually really cute. Okay, well, that is all of the questions I am going to answer today. I I actually answered a lot more than I thought I would. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a productive week.